Okay, so we have here um, the second, maybe third step of making an Aquaman shoulder and belt. This is kind of intended to be a companion piece to the patterns that I sell in my workshop. It's not necessary to have purchased the patterns. I'm sure you can watch this and reverse engineer something similar, but it's not expensive. Um, the shoulder and belt set is more complicated than any of the other patterns that I've sold, which is why I am trying to put together a video tutorial to show how it all comes together because it involves a lot of different little pieces and a lot of steps and a lot of different steps for each different type of piece. So. Today, what I'm starting with is what's referred to in the pattern tutorial page as the uh, heavy gold plate, because these are the parts that are going to make up the... Uh, my patterns are not great. The main body of the shoulder piece and the little plates coming off it and uh, the little... There's a plate on the front that connects it to the straps and a companion plate on the back. So today, I have the leather for it already cut out and cased, and this is skipping a few steps, but they're kind of easy steps. I just forgot to record myself doing those. Trace the pattern pieces. This is the pattern piece. Nice heavy cardstock. Trace this onto your dry leather with just a thin point sharpie, then cut it out with a utility knife and then you case it, which is the process of getting leather properly damp before you can work with it. And I have many words to say on the subject of casing that I'm not going to reiterate here because I've got an entire tutorial on that. But these should be ready to work with. A little bit damp still, a little bit damper than I would like, but this is a large piece and this is very dry windy weather. I've got the window open, there's actually a sandstorm going on outside. You may be able to hear a bit of it in the audio pickup. So yeah, this is a large piece and it's very dry weather, so it's probably going to be pushing the edge of too dry by the time I'm done with it, so it's fine to start when it's a bit wet. When it's wet, you can do all sorts of fun things with it. You can uh, do your carving, your tracing, your carving, your stamping. You can do your shaping as well, and we're going to do both here because that's what this is about. All right, so the pattern piece that I'm going to use to trace with is ordinary printer paper, and this is a bit too large for uh, one sheet of 8x11 printer paper, so I taped it down the seam and then just covered the rest of it with packaging tape because I make this pattern often enough that it kind of gets grody real quickly if it's not covered in plastic. And you can see it doesn't quite fit the piece that I cut out. That's okay because it's got this border around it, so it'll be fine. And usually I would just hold it down for the tracing, the tracing is done with a stylus. Just um, You can do it with a ballpoint pen instead. This doesn't leave ink, obviously, the ballpoint pen would, but it's not a big deal because you're getting ink on your pattern and theoretically not on the leather itself, although it does run the risk of leaving smudges. But it's about the, uh, the size and shape of a ballpoint pen tip, so just a little rounded thing. So you don't want to be scraping your leather or scratching it, you just want to be uh, pushing an indentation into it. And usually I would just trace this thing out without taping it down because you can trace the outside and then you can trace the inside separately because it doesn't really matter if it shifts around a bit. But for the purposes of this video, I am going to tape it down just to show how that works. And I'm using ordinary scotch tape for that. But the thing about taping stuff to wet leather is that tape does not stick to wet leather at all. You have to stick the tape to itself, so I'm going to wrap it all the way around. Oh my goodness. And make sure it's centered properly when you do, which it's not right now.
Okay. That should be fine. Okay. So I'm not actually going to trace this line around the very edge because there is a much better tool for that. It's this guy. It's got this little arm that you set up along the side of the leather, and then you just drag it around, and this little modeling head there will leave a crease, a very even crease that's perfectly parallel to the edge. And I really like that. And it's not a must-have, because obviously you can trace it out manually, but it does make your finished product much cleaner. So, um, I guess to start with, just drag this guy all around. And a lot of the tracing phase is very repetitive, so I am going to zip through it as soon as I do kind of an establishing shot of what we're doing here. I find it helps to do all the lines that are going in the same direction at one time because you're not moving your hand and the paper around as much. Because the order of operations when you're tracing doesn't matter, you just have to hit everything eventually. And you can peek, as you'll see me doing a couple times here. If you forget which lines you've already traced, you can just lift up the pattern and peek underneath. This is why it's good for people who aren't that experienced to have it taped down, because if when you're moving your hands, repositioning the piece, peeking underneath it, the pattern shifts at all, you are never going to be able to line it up again perfectly uh, because you can't see underneath it to line it up. So don't forego the tape unless you're positive that you can do the section without the pattern shifting while you're working with it. Don't worry if you wander off the lines a little bit when you're tracing with the stylus. You'll have a chance to fix it in the next step when you're using the swivel knife to carve these lines. Because every line that you're marking right now is a line that you are going to uh, use the swivel knife to cut actually into the leather. You create these grooves for the stamps to follow. So if you wander off the lines a little bit here, uh, it depends on which direction you wander. Uh, because any indentations you leave in the leather, like all this stuff, it is here to stay. And the cut lines will cover it because they'll follow those lines. <coughs> but if I put a line somewhere that I didn't want, if I just like right through the center of those triangles, then you would be able to see that on the finished product because wet leather picks up indentations and once it does there's no way to buff them out really you can use a, the back side of a spoon to kind of press the surrounding area down too so that it's less obvious but generally your best option is just to not leave wet marks not leave marks on the wet leather this is why um if you're wearing if you've got rings jewelry watches uh cuffs that have buttons on them that are likely to roll or like press down into the leather when you're working on it, you're going to want to take those off and just use your bare hands and also be very careful not to grab the leather and accidentally put fingernail marks in it or scrape it across the edges of that. Obviously the underside doesn't matter, but if I flipped it over for whatever reason, this jaggy edge there would be enough to leave a noticeable scrape across it. And it's not the end of the world if you do. Leather's an organic material, so it's going to have imperfections regardless. And um, yeah, there's a little thing right here that's a stretch mark. And there's a couple little things look like little tiny scars look like maybe bug bites there. So there are going to be flaws in the leather. That's just, that's a feature, not a bug. Um, because it means every piece is kind of unique and it adds that kind of weathered effect, which is good when you're doing armor that's supposed to look like it's been in battle. So leather is well suited in that regard, but better to not leave these things by accident. Yep. 
there's all the lines looking good. Okay, so all of the lines in one direction have been done. And this is one of the reasons why this piece in particular is so expensive, because all of these little pieces are really time consuming. Any kind of intense tooling like this uh, <clears throat> adds to the expense of a project because you're going over it three times, basically. You're going over it the first time to trace it, the second time to carve it out with the swivel knife, and the third time with your stamps because every cut line you make, with some rare exceptions, really ought to be beveled. Beveling is where you take an angled stamp and you stamp down one side of the line to create a kind of background-foreground distinction. It's how you create the illusion of depth in leather working, in leather carving. And it's very lovely, and there we go. I do see leather working for sale sometimes, primarily on Etsy, that has been carved but not stamped, and it just looks unfinished. It's recognizable usually as the thing it's supposed to be, but it doesn't look good. The occasions when you would use a cut line and not bevel it is usually just little decorative flourishes in floral carving. So this is the top one, and now I am going to do the outline with this tool, which already seems to be set at the right distance from the edge. Although you can adjust this to make it wider or narrower to give you more or less border. Like I said, this isn't one of the absolutely necessary leatherworking tools. I think there's only about six, in my opinion, that are vitally necessary. But this is a tool that will make your job much easier and much cleaner. And that is often worth getting. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in the bag to stop it from drying out any further while I trace the smaller pieces. Um, when you've got stuff at the correct level of casing, you can put it back in the plastic bag that I was holding it in earlier, and it will halt the drawing process. It'll just kind of pause it where it is, which is good because I'm not done working with it wet yet, and I need it to still be cased when I go to carve it. But before I do that, I'm going to hit it with um, Lexol which is a leather conditioner. You can buy this in the automotive section at Walmart. They recently changed the bottle, so you might have the older bottle. Now it looks like, I don't know, men's hipster hair product. But I really like it. It lubricates the surface of the leather, that, so the stamping and the carving that you do later will go much more smoothly. And it's pretty easy. You just kind of goop it on and then rub it in. This will also uh, help keep it from drying out. It'll prolong your working time a little bit because you're adding moisture to it. If you don't have this um, straight up hair conditioner, you probably do about the same thing. I don't know, maybe straight up lotion. I don't know what makes this different. And I'm putting more on it than I usually would because like I said, this is a project that takes a while to work on and I don't want it drying out in the middle. I'll probably be reapplying this when I'm working on later stages. Whee. So the other pieces that I had to do, I'm also going to work on one at a time instead of taking them out all at once because I want them to stay moist. And here's me putting this back in the bag. Oh, this one's really easy, actually. Um, it doesn't have anything in the way of tracing. It just has a line around the edge. It shows this on the pattern. Um, I have j just happened to have made this thing so many times that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's... Uh... A lot of practice with the Aquaman shoulder. Okay, so that's all he needs. 
So these are the little plates that cover the upper arm. They come off the bottom of it like that and they're layered one, two, three, four. So they are continuing the same motif. And that's what I'm not going to bother to tape down because it does not take long to trace out. It doesn't have to be perfect going around the corners there because I'm going to hit it with the swivel knife and then it is probably going to end up covered by the rivets anyway because that point there is where you rivet the pieces together. Ordinarily I'm kind of lazy and the other little weird pieces I tend to put off to a later point but for the sake of showing all of the heavy gold plate pieces together I'm going to go ahead and do them. These are, those ones I just marked, are not for tracing. They are for uh, punching holes to put rivets in later. The front has a little window cut into it that I am not going to deal with right now. 